So here's our conclusion, folks. The emergent church seeks to fix problems brought on by what is actually biblical prophecy taking place. They say the old way of church, doing church, will never reach the postmoderns. They presuppose that the postmoderns, because they're not coming to church in the same numbers that they were 30 or 40 years ago, that the 20 and 30-something people have to be reached differently. And at the very beginning of the emergent church, I think they were probably trying to figure out an answer to, to bring people in the church, and then suddenly it began to, to tear the doctrines of the church apart to bring people in so they would feel more comfortable and they would have a, a surrounding that would make them feel, you know, all warm and fuzzy. See, what's really going on is there is going to be a mass exodus by the time it's all done. A little bit of persecution in America, we're going to find out who the real church really is. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not praying for it. I just know what the scripture says. And so we have to be aware that if we're going to make it in those times, we've got to hide the word of God away in our hearts that we wouldn't sin against God and follow what it says. So the emergents believe, you see, that you know, we've got to change the way we do things and, and draw people to come in. And what they're really doing is assuring that whoever comes into their midst and buys into their belief system will never be saved. That's really what they're assuring because they have changed the only message that can help the few that might come. It's not that I don't want us to build our churches. It's not that I, I don't think we ought to bring them in. I think we ought to bring everybody in. I want all to be saved, but it's not going to happen because there's going to be more of a rejection. There's going to be a, a, a more of a, um, of a viciousness against the gospel, a more outward rebellion, a more outward rejection. And see, they're upset because we don't have 20 and 30-something people coming, so they change, and, and then, of course, those that come can't find Christ. And attempting to do so, they're fulfilling Bible prophecy. The great rebellion, the great falling away that Paul talked about that we mentioned last week. We evening. can't afford fatalism. We can't afford to be fatalistic about it. We need to keep a positive attitude. That's a good thing. I'm real positive about Jesus. I'm not very positive about what might happen in this planet, but I'm real positive. And our mission is to warn people, right? And, and you know, I've never won anybody to the Lord by saying, you know, Jesus is really great. I think we need to be exuberant about our faith, sharing the truth, and telling them the truth at the same time with that confidence that we know that everything is okay, that Jesus is Lord. We need to make sure that we prove all things, test everything, as I said, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all kinds of evil, every appearance of what evil brings, testing everything, as the scripture says. And again, we have to ask ourselves, are the sum of the ideas we have about Christianity, new age, emergent, or authentically Christian? I, I can't be your religion policeman, your TV policeman, your music policeman, the different stuff I talk about in our ministry. But I just need to lay it out in such a way that then you can make better decisions with, and that's really what it's all about, that you'll make better decisions, and you'll make biblical decisions as we go further into the end days. New Agers seek to minimize Jesus. Emergents seek to redefine Jesus. It is up to us to refute them and show the world who the real Jesus is. Now, why would the FedEx truck be on the screen at this point? Is there another computer malfunction going on that I don't know about? No, no, it's there for a reason, you see, because let's just say the FedEx truck pulls down your street or your road on a nice day, and you've got the windows up, and you see the driver get out and go to the back of the truck and find the box with your name on it, and uh, you can hear him as he takes his box cutter and opens the box. And then he begins to peer inside the box that's addressed to your house, and you hear him say, oh, how old-fashioned. They'll never accept that. Oh, this is offensive. Why, we wouldn't want that. We need to pass a law against that. Oh, and this, oh, well, well they wouldn't understand that. This is so old-fashioned, antiquated. And it's a bunch of that old fear-oriented religion. We need to take that out, too. And so when he's done, he takes his tape gun and tapes up your box and trots up to your front door. And about that point, you're not calling FedEx to complain. You're calling the sheriff. Because he just opened your box and stole something that all he was supposed to do was deliver it intact. How? 
how dare we or anybody claiming to be Christian change the gospel and go unchallenged in doing so? I have no personal axe to grind against the emergence. Having been around Brian McLaren for three days, if I didn't know what he believed and didn't know what I believed, I'd say, what a nice guy. What a compassionate man. That's not the issue. The issue is what is being taught is leading people away from the kingdom of God. You see, it's not our business to see who we can receive or accept or reject the message. It's God's business. God saves the souls. But you and I are God's FedEx kids. We're his delivery people, and we've got to deliver intact the message that can save. It is our responsibility to remain loyal to the message that can help the world, that can save the emergence, that can save and deliver the New Agers like it did my mother. Now, the question for us is, are, are you embracing New Age philosophies? Are you embracing emergent philosophies? Are you an authentic Christian? I ask you again. Check yourself, test yourself, because the New Age denial and emergent redefinition of Christianity leads directly to one place. It leads directly to hell. And this is why I am so passionate on this issue and why I will continue to talk about this and the other issues that are affecting the church in a negative way as long as I have breath in this body. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you. And I pray, Lord, that we will understand and we will get this picture that there is an attack from within upon the truth. Help us to raise up a standard that others would know you and serve you. Give us boldness and courage, we pray, as we follow your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I encourage you folks. Amen. Amen.